Hello, I'm at Super George and I'm so blessed. Praise God. Now the word of God is sweet. There is, I don't know anyone who will be sharing God's word. Now, when I say God's word, I'm not just talking about someone who's reading the Bible. Some people can be reading the Bible and be sad. See, the Bible really makes them sad. But there is no one that will receive the word of the Lord and not be happy, praise God. So when I say I'm so glad bringing God's word to you, it's beyond what I'm saying. It's what is going on on the inside of me, praise God. That's why I always thank you all the time. You give me the opportunity to experience this beautiful thing from the Lord, where he brings his word into my heart and then I bring it out to you, praise God. Yeah. So thank you and thank you again for your time watching this broadcast. And thank you for the feedback that you send to us. Don't stop sending them. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. And then, of course, more importantly, share the message. Help us share. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Then help us share to everyone on your contact. This is good enough message. I know it's good enough. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we boldly make requests and demand for our delivery? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my delivery. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So we are talking about the true light. John chapter 8 and verse 12. So I was sharing with you yesterday how Jesus saved that woman that was caught in the act of adultery. He saved her by his light. Now, when she left, after he said, I, I don't condemn you, go and sin no more. It was after she left, he now spoke up and said, I am the light of the world. You see, if he didn't see the truth under his light, that woman may have been killed. Sometimes you have done wrong and you have so destroyed yourself. You have destroyed your, your esteem. You have, you have just bashed yourself so much. But you are doing all that because you are looking at your action under your light or under other people's light. Have you viewed that action under his light? There are times people make mistakes, but what they don't realize is that that mistake was their salvation actually. I'll give you an example from scriptures. Jesus looked at Peter and said, look, before the cock crows, you will deny me. Now you know, Peter eventually denied Jesus three solid times before the cock crowed. And we look at Peter and say, Peter, Peter, a whole you. I mean, you don't expect Peter to deny Jesus. If it was maybe Bartholomew, you know, we don't know much about Bartholomew, or, or someone else, maybe. But Peter, ha! Huh? You've been with Jesus in all those secret prayer meetings he goes for. You've been with Jesus in all the, the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter was there. Oh boy. <laughs> he was there. And then they asked him, You are one of his disciples. Peter said, Not me. Never. See this man. I've never seen him before. If I even came here wondering, they said they are trying one man that says he's dead whatever he said he is. That's why I came here. I don't know him before. And, and, and guess what? You know, John was right there with him. Praise God. Oh, 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 John, John was right there with Peter. And John was looking at Peter. But thank God for the words of Jesus. And thank God for understanding. Now, when Jesus told him, you will deny me. Now, it is, it is okay for us to think Jesus was telling him, Peter, watch it too, because I'm seeing you deny me. Watch it. No. The, hey, Gabo said, Brennan, we are talking about the true light. 
The denial of Jesus by Peter was the escape route that God had made to save Peter's life. Yes, that was what God had determined for the safety or for the uh, rescue of Peter. The only way Peter would have been saved from that hour because the normal person we know Peter to be, most likely he would have been crucified with Jesus. Say, how, how's that? Yes. Because, you see, remember, Peter had told Jesus that, look, I will follow you anywhere you enter. And Jesus looked at him and said, really? He says, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Now, Peter meant what he said. Now, you remember when they came to arrest Jesus, Peter brought out a, a knife and cut off. What, that was risky. Man, that was risky. Praise God. Yeah, it was. You know what it is for soldiers to come arrest somebody and you bring out a weapon? They had every authority and reason to waste you at that time. Because you, they came under attack from you with a weapon. But Jesus quickly healed the man's ears. And I was like Jesus <laughs> closing up the evidence. Praise <laughs> God. He healed the man and told Peter, put, the, put that the sword in. So that's the Peter we know for you. And he told Jesus, I will follow you into every place. And he was on his way, following Jesus. And brothers and sisters, Jesus was to go into that judgment hall. And when he got into that judgment hall, they began to accuse him that he said he was the son of God. Now imagine if Peter was there. I think Peter would have been quiet. Peter that received revelation from God that Jesus was the son of God. Oh, Peter would have preached that day. He was ready. So, but God knew that before the high priest, if Peter made that proclamation that Jesus was the son of God, it would have been a blasphemous proclamation before the high priest. Because the high priest was the custodian of the law. See that now? And the law have told them from what they understand from the law, you shall not have any other God beside me. See that? So God saying, according to their law, I am the only God. Because he declared that that's the first commandment. He said, the Lord God is one Lord. So Jesus coming here now to say, I and my father are one. Huh? Jesus also saying, you know, I am the son of God. Huh? So you're telling us that there is another God. <laughs> Praise God. Now you see, that's the light they knew. So because the high priest was the custodian of the law, if Peter had spoken before the high priest and as little as suggest that Jesus was the son of God, Peter would have been crucified with Jesus. Yeah. So, God knowing this, had to create an escape plan for Peter. And how did God do it? God invited the one he normally sends on all those dirty jobs. He said, God sent, yeah, Satan, praise God. So, so now Jesus had said, look, the book of Luke told us this. You know, Jesus told Peter, Satan has asked for permission that he may have you. And this is his plan. He wants to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And then he now told him, when you are converted. Now, what happened behind the scene? Now, you've seen this two times in scriptures. You've seen this in the case of Job. You've seen this in the case of Ahab. In the case of Job, it was God that asked him, have you considered my servant Job? In the case of Ahab, he said, who would deceive Ahab to go to war? And Satan gave the good suggestion that God allowed to happen. So the same thing happened in Peter's case. Satan shows up and said, if you will allow me, I will handle Peter. What will you do? I will make him deny the master. Now his intention was to ultimately destroy Peter because he had his eyes on Peter. That's the devil. He had his eyes on Peter. 
And then God looking at it and, and, and felt this was the only way we can stop Peter. See that now? So God allowed it. Now, according to our lights, you see that? See what I'm driving at now? Peter was wrong. But according to his light, which is the true light, Peter wasn't guilty. So you see that's the reason when Jesus rose from the dead, he never, he never reprimanded Peter. Rather, he told him, go and tell my disciples and Peter to meet me up. Peter, the one who denied you. Didn't you know he denied you? He says, tell him also to come and meet him. And God still did with Peter's life what he intended to do with Peter even before this whole betrayal thing happened. He had said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What he meant by that is, Peter, I'm going to make you the point man for the build, building of my church. What does it mean, the point man? I will put my voice in your mouth and you will give the brethren direction. That's why on the day of Pentecost, it was Peter that spoke up. That's why, you know, when Jesus, remember when Jesus came to them and they had gone back fishing, it was G Peter Jesus held accountable. When he told him, do you love me more than this? Feed my sheep. So that's what he meant, that upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, Satan knew that and wanted to attack that also. So when God gave him that permission, he felt that he is gotten Peter. But he didn't know that God set a timing for that betrayal, that denier. God set the timing and the timing for that denier or for Satan to have rule or power over Peter was the crowing of the cock, the crow of the cock. The moment the cock crows, that was the end of Satan's activity over Peter's life. So that's why Jesus gave him that timing. Now, Satan didn't know this. Praise God. He just felt, look, I'm going to make this guy deny the master before that cock crows. I'll do it. And he did it the first time, did it the second time. And did it the third time. But well, God saved Peter. Praise God. Now, why did God save? Because God did not find any fault in what he did. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. Why? That was the true light. So I say again, how many times have you condemned yourself because you did some action and according to your light is wrong? Have you taken that matter to him? Have you taken that matter for him to view under his light? Praise God. A lot of people have limited their lives. A lot of people have told themselves they can never achieve much in life because of some wrong they did before. Someone has believed that she's done several abortions so she can never have a child. Now I'm not saying the light of God is saying your abortion was right. But hey, is the verdict you have given yourself the verdict that came from his light or the verdict that came from your light? Did he, you hear him tell you that because of what you have done, you will never have a child again? Some have resigned that they will never get married. Why? Because of something they have done in the past. Some have resigned that they, you know, someone is even looking at me and saying, I know me, people like me will never make heaven because our sin is too much. Whose light? Whose light? Your light or his light? Can you bring yourself under? You know, every time we take decisions and every time this judgment comes into our heart, did we take the right decision or did we take the wrong decisions? In your family, you take decisions. And sometimes your people want to condemn you. Oh, you're selfish. Hey, according to whose light? 
You see what I'm sharing with you? It's time to bring everything under His light. It is only His light that will tell you the truth. It is only His light that will tell you if what you have done carries the weight of this repercussion or not. It's only His light that will tell you if God is angry at you or not. It's only His light. I can show you things in scriptures that men would judge as wrong, but God thinks differently concerning it. Even the death of Jesus, you know, many thought that Jesus was dying because of his sins. Many thought, oh, see, he proclaimed himself as the son of God. Now God is dealing with him. Who are you, a man calling yourself the son of God? Can you see where you ended up? You see that now? But they didn't know that God was working out his righteousness through that whole situation. Brothers and sisters, before you condemn yourself, why don't you bring that matter under his light? And let him be the judge. Let him have the final say. It doesn't matter what men have said. It doesn't matter what anyone have told you. You by yourself, you can take that matter before him. Let him view it under his light and let him give the verdict. Only his verdict will stand the test of time. I pray for you today because I sense, I sense that spirit of condemnation. I, I, I'm sensing not just one person, several people watching me. There are things you have condemned yourself over. And now, listening to me, you are wondering. Listen, I want to pray for you. Father, I pray. And we bring all these situations under your light. Lord, speak from heaven. And let your light shine on these situations. And that your name will be glorified in their lives and in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen and I hear the Lord said I should speak life to you someone you're watching me you, you've been battling the spirit of death in your mind because of certain things that you have done you, you feel so worthless thank you Holy Spirit you feel so hop worthless you're a young man you feel you're feeling so worthless with yourself and you've resigned yourself to any day death comes let it just carry me because no, there is nothing good that can come out of my life that's what you're telling yourself but i heard the lord i was praying i heard the lord say speak life to someone so i speak life to you in the name of the lord jesus christ death is not what god has planned for you there is something god wants to do with your life and if you will just surrender to him and allow him to take your life, he will bring to pass his thoughts and his plans for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are that person that I just spoke about, I would like to hear from you. Because the Lord really wants to say, God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.